varsity boys basketball game as the Dover Sherboard Raiders take on their hometown Hopkinton Pillars. The Tri Valley League is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, and the berating of players or officials. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Thank you for helping create a positive, respectful, and fun environment here at HHS. And now for tonight's lineups. For the Dover Sherman Raiders, starting at forward, number 21, Junior, Brett Stark. Starting at guard, number 24, Junior, Cam Raycroft. Starting at center, number 10, senior captain, Oliver Asacker. Starting at forward, number 11, senior captain, Jack Gately. And starting at guard, number 14, senior captain, John Muckstad. The Raiders are coached by Rick Brady and assisted by Joe Maselli. And now for your hometown, Hopkinton Hillers. Starting at guard, number 10, sophomore, Tommy Anderson. Starting at guard, number 21, junior, Michael Budenkopf. Starting at forward, number 24, junior, Brendan Kelly. Starting at guard, number 32, junior, Benjamin Kenzie. And starting at forward, number 35, senior captain, Zach Sosinski. The Hillers are managed by Cam Couches and coached by Tom Keen, assisted by Chris Banks. Now, would you all please rise for the play of our national anthem by our Hopkinton Hoop Band. HKM TV presents another edition of Varsity Basketball. This time here tonight, we have the boys, the 9 6 Hiller boys, who have won six games in a row, taking on the 7 9 Dover Sherburn team, who we have not seen yet this year, Steve. So, not much knowledge about this team coming in, except, like I said, 3 2 over the last five, but running into a Hopkinton team that, like I said, has won six games in a row. Yeah, Hopkinton are definitely on a roll. They just are coming off a big win against Ashland in Ashland, the doubleheader. Right. And the girls won the first game in Ashland. A little revenge on their part. A have, big win for the girls. And uh, they have, a, a, you know, get, getting back on the winning track. And uh, the boys let, let the good times roll here. Six in a row. Hopefully it'll be seven. And Dover Sherborne's trying to play for their lives to get into the playoffs here. So it should be a really competitive game. And meanwhile, on the flip side, the Hillers have a chance to clinch a postseason berth sitting right now at nine wins as Brendan Kelly fires up a shot no good but two free throws coming for the junior. Number 10 Oliver Asaker. 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 Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We'll just get to some of their names as we go here. Uh, pretty tall uh, senior center for, for them. Uh, looks to be at least 6'3 uh, or 4 anyway. Uh, we don't have the heights here, but right. 10 seconds into the game, he's got a, his first foul, so they're going to need him to stick around, I think.
Kelly 0 for 2 on that trip. And it's funny how we talk about Dover Sherbert being in uh, kind of fight or flight mode, so to speak, to try to see if they can clinch a postseason berth. We were talking about that not too long ago for Hopkinton as a travel is called against Dover Sherbert and first turnover, turnover of the game. Yeah. But the, the, the Hillers have reeled off that six-game winning streak, and now all of a sudden they're sitting in pr pretty good shape. Postseason all but a certainty, pretty, um, I would imagine, and now 6-4 and four record also in the TVL. Yeah, they have quite, a, quite, some moment, quite the momentum going on right now, and Dover Sherbourne looking to uh, stop that momentum. It's really a must-win for them if they're going to get a sniff of the playoffs. McKenzie launches the shot. No good. Oh, nice. Rebound. Pumakad ah. puts it up and in. He gets right through. No so one boxing out. Tom, Tommy uh, uh, Ambersoni. Yes. Excuse me. Sure. Uncontested. Uh, I'm sure the Dover Sherborne coach wasn't happy about that. Shot from Dover Sherborne. No good. Szyzyski with the board. Szyzyski gets it back. Wow. The running lay-in is good. Gets the feed from Ambersoni. 4-0, Hopkinton. Nice finish by Zach with a right hand. Left-handed player going up strong with his right hand. Stark needs help. He does find it. Gets it back. Elbow jumper, no good. Rebounds to Zitsky. Zach bringing energy like he always does every game. Already with a couple rebounds. Kuvakad thought about the three. Hopkinton still firing the ball around. It's like a two-three zone situation uh, on Dover Sherborne's part playing. Pass inside Kelly. He's uh -oh. fouled on the catch. Could be number two on number ten. Oh. Looks like number on number eleven. So they're spreading it around. Gately, a bit. his first foul. Jack Gately, senior forward, <laughs> got some height there. He looks about 6'4", 5". I can't tell from here, but... Yeah, a lot of length on this yeah. Dover Sherbert team. Doesn't matter as Brendan Kelly rises up for another two points for Hopkinton. 6-0. Six, six, just over six minutes left here in the first quarter. And a 6-0 lead for the Hillers. Nice trapping defense of the Hillers. Throwing it to Dover Sherbert. There you go. Szyzyski almost picks it off from Stark. Leads to an open three. First bucket for Dover Sherbert and Alex Waugh. Just came in the game, Alex Wall. Oh, that's, that's kind of discarded. <laughs> wow. Shot fired. Cam Raycroft, the junior guard for Dover Sherman, kind of put, put, it, yeah, put his elbow out. Looked like there could have been a call. Then he turned around and calmly knocked down the jumper. Well, Puvakad kind of got pushed to, out of the way by, by Raycroft, but no call. Nice shot. By McKenzie, ben. nice take. 8-5, Hiller lead now. 1-2-2, two, two, full court press, trying to trap. There it is. Ambersoni takes oh. it up, gets poked from behind, but a foul called. And John Muckstadt not happy about it, but picks up the foul nonetheless. Substitution's not for the Hillers. Luke Beloy is having a good... Good season, junior guard, and um, didn't see who else came in. Looks like Ryan Kester, another junior guard. This team's loaded with juniors. Very, it's going to be a good, good couple of years ahead here. Szyzyski fires away. a shot, hits nothing there. Rebound goes to Dover Sherburn, trailing by three. Pass knocked away by Hopkinton. Dover Sherburn keeps possession, and now some subs for both teams. As Jack Breslin checks out, checks onto the floor for the first time in this contest. Brings a lot of energy. Uh, Jack Breslin does to the, the Hillers when he comes in. Always plays tough D. Pass inside, almost taken away. An open three, though, knocked down. Dover Sherburn. Hot from beyond the arc to start. Brett Stark ties it up. Eight to eight. Four twenty left here in the first quarter. Ooh, 
Deloy hit with the travel. A bit too anxious to get that drive to the hoop started. Turnover for Hopkinton. Too bad. And Dover Shoreburn, so, so far so good. But it certainly helps anyone's team, any any cause when you start hitting three pointers. So they've got they've got two already, only four minutes into the game. Keeping them into the game. And for the trap at top top of the midcourt range. Breslin playing great on ball defense. Post shot, no good. Muckstadt fighting for it, forces the jump ball. Dover Sherborne uh, fan base, which consists mostly of parents here to our right. Thought there was a foul earlier than that. Wide open Shot three. fired. Another three up and in for Dover Sherburn. Evan Skiri. Freshman. Freshman. Getting early minutes, knocking it down. Breslin on the other end. No good. Stark draws the foul. Looks like this one's going against Kester. Should be his first. Didn't see a lot of contact there, but refs trying to establish, you know, their rhythm as well as the players so they, the players can know what to expect, what they can get away with, what they can't. Oh, Ace nice Acker drives. Nice take down the baseline. Ace Acker came out of the game for a couple minutes, kind of settled himself down. Oh, nice block by McKenzie 14. on a similar shot that he hit earlier, this time blocked. Stark takes it all the way, up out. and in. Take a timeout, but just a And a big run here for Dover Sherburn, opening up a seven point lead as the Hillers have gone cold offensively. Meanwhile, Dover Sherburn hitting it from all the areas, especially from deep. Well, you know, it was an eight to five Hiller lead. Now the uh, Dover Sherborne Raiders have rattled off 10 points in a row. Take a 15 to eight lead, 310 left in the first quarter and the Hillers aren't really pushing back much. Coach Keene didn't really like uh, the lack of intensity, the lack of focus, whatever you want to call it, but he needed to gather his troops and uh, get them focused, refocused and play with a little more sense of purpose. Right, things started well for the Hillers, jumping out to that to that 8-5 lead that you were talking about, but then really Dover Sherman turned it on, especially from deep, with threes all over the place. And then we saw the freshman, Evan Scary, coming in, uh, getting early minutes off the bench and knocking down a three. And I think the uh, most important thing about seeing this is they're not hesitating shooting these threes. It seems like they're going to be firing them all night. They're not just uh, taking advantage of poor defense right now. They're, they're looking for three-point shots. So Hopkinton really has something to uh, look out for defensively. Yeah, they're playing with a little more sense of desperation, which they should. They, they, they need this. If they, I, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but if they lose tonight, they may not be able to make the playoffs. So this may be a oh, – there's a nice shot by Breslin. This could go for him. The Breslin's jumper no good. Dover Sherburn with possession now. 2.50 left Ooh, almost in the first there. quarter. Nice. Nice hands. And a pass – Tipped away by Hopkinton. Dover Sherburn keeps possession. As we've seen here, Tim, you know, the, these games are, can change in a matter of a couple possessions. Very streaky. A couple three-pointers here and there. All of a sudden, it's a different game. Oh, that's a lot of contact. Stark there. drives. Forces the issue. It will get two free throws as a result. Fouls are starting to balance out. The Dover Sherborne got three early fouls, and now the Hillers Great. just got their third foul in a row. So uh, that was definitely some contact on that play. Yep, that foul credited to Ambersoni, the sophomore guard. As Stark knocks down the first free throw. Two for two on that trip for Stark. No, not a doubt in either one of those. Not a good sign for the Hillers. Oh, nice pass. Amber Sony gets deep in the lane. A nice pass to Kelly. He couldn't hit on the shot and then attempt, uh, try to rebound that ball. Ended up tipping it out of bounds. Kelly's usually so used to getting, having contact there. He was so wide open. He kind of came up short on that little bunny. Uh, but he's usually, you know, creating contact and, uh, and, and using his body to create the lane, but 
but not that time. Scary drives, a nice dish to Asacker. Takes contact, can't hit the shot. Hopkinson now with it. An open three for Kester, he launches it. Nice. Oh, no good. Asacker with the board. And then a foul called against Hopkinton. Looks like the ref called a push from behind. <clears throat> Looks like uh, Michael Pluvacot with his second foul. 151 left in the first quarter. Have to keep an eye on that. Looks like Ben McKenzie's getting them ready to come back in. Stark launches the three, is a bit short. Rebound to Skiri, a quick pass to Asacker down low. He's fouled again. And just like that, the foul's racking up pretty quickly for Hopkinton. Boy, it's been a really long time, Tim, since the Hillers have scored any points. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, they had an eight to five lead, you know, three or four minutes ago, longer than that right. maybe. And uh, right now it's a 17, now 18, eight lead. So that's 13 straight points. And uh, Coach Keen is Trying to get the right combination out there, bringing us. Uh, let's see who just came in here. Yeah, um, Sazitsky and uh, looks like McKenzie as well. Ionelli just came in. And Ionelli. We'll probably uh, get a little rhythm here, maybe get a couple hoops before the end of this quarter. Sazitsky drives, takes nice. the contact, finishes with a nice lefty lay in. Needed that one. 19 to 10 now, Dover Sherbert. Hillers need to dig in a little bit here. Need to stop. Another three. This and one just rattles out. out. Good box out by Brendan on that. Jack Gately narrowly misses knocking another one down. Nice. Kelly down low, the nice layup over Asacker. 19 to 12 now. Exactly what the doctor ordered there. They needed to get the pendulum going the other way. They have two quick hoops. Just under a minute left in the quarter. McKenzie hounding Muckstat. Now Muckstat gives it up. Another three. Short again. McKenzie with the board. He fakes out the defense, drives, and is hit hard. Foul called, going against Gately. McKenzie with a nice take to the basket. Yep. Two free throws covered. Definitely took it up strong, created the lane, and there wasn't really much room to get that shot off. Uh, going against the taller player, uh, Jack Gately. Okay, we talked about him. That's his, that's his second foul, so he's going to come out. He's an important player for Dover Sherborne, and he's got his second foul before the end of the first quarter, so we'll have to keep an eye on a couple of these players with two fouls already, including uh, Michael Puvicata and Hopkinson. McKenzie knocks down both. That's six straight points. That's, uh, that's more like it. Good D. Stark fires the quick jumper. No good. Gets his own shot, his own rebound. Dover Sherburn saves the possession. Five seconds. Muckstadt fires the shot. No good. The loose ball, another shot for Muckstadt. No good again. And that finally does it here for the first quarter. And finally, a little life at the end of that quarter for Hopkinton, six points in a row. 19-14, Dover Sherburn lead heading into the second frame. Yeah, certainly a game of sort of some spurts there. And uh, as the Hiller cheerleaders come on, the, do a little routine, which we all enjoy. Uh, Hiller's closing the gap to five points down 19-14 after falling behind by 13 points or 12 points. So you can enjoy the Hiller's chillers for a minute. So Tom Keen making those late adjustments there, putting in Sazitsky, Ionelli, and McKenzie, and that leads to, like you said, Steve, that six-point run there at the end of the first, really kind of salvaging that first, that opening quarter for the Hillers. Yeah, well, now it's a little more realistic, but, you know, you can see uh, this is going to be a competitive game. I don't think it doesn't look like it's going to be a blowout either way. 
Uh, I could be wrong, I'm, but you can see that both teams are playing with a Great. purpose now. And uh, Dover Sherborne, they got a lot of talented players. And some height, so. Tough D. Like we said earlier, this is the only time that Hopkinton and Dover Sherburn meet this season. So only one time for these teams to show each other what they've got. And they did so in the first quarter. Another three for Dover Sherburn. This one just rattles out again. And then Ben McKenzie is fouled. This one looks like it's going against Muckstad. So foul is going all around. Actually, no, this one going to uh, Stark. Five fouls apiece again. For the, as, far as, as far as the bonus goes, next couple fouls on each team is going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Wide open, Zizitsky. Nice drive from uh, Amber Sony opens up Zizitsky for the wide open three, and he calmly knocks it down. 19-17, Dover Sherburn lead. Now down to two points. Stark nice, jumps points. in for the deep two. Rebound to Ionelli. And Asacker hit with a tough call after that, but a foul nonetheless. Another one going against Dover Sherburn. Not sure if that's his third or second. And a timeout second. called by Dover Sherburn. Yep, second to Asacker. And head coach Rick Grady calling a timeout, trying to settle his team down just but 46 seconds into the second quarter. I mean, it was 19 to eight, and now it's 19 17. So uh, you know, as, a, as, these, as these things can go, there's mm -hmm. swings both ways. And the right game now, of runs. It's going going the Hillers' <laughs> way, and Coach uh, Rick Grady of Dover Sherborne is trying to gather his troops now. And uh, I think there's going to be some foul trouble a little later. It's pretty right. early. A few, three or four players both you know have two fouls apiece with only seven minutes. Well, we're only seven uh, minutes left in the, in the second quarter, so right. still three, plenty of time left to go. And uh, so some of these some of these key players are going to have to sit for a little while, including uh, number ten, Oliver Asacker. Asacker, thank you. I'll get it. Yeah. Um, who seems to be you know a very active player for Dover Sherborne, but he's going to have to sit for a little while, I think. With two fouls at this point, he can't get a right. third foul. It'll be interesting to see if we see him at the end, you know, this quarter, maybe. Maybe a little later, but and there's others too. So, right. So it is an it was an intense first quarter between these two TVL schools. But Hopkinton can't afford to use all their energy tonight. Got a busy week ahead of them um, at Westwood tomorrow at 6:30 p.m. Nice. And then at Medfield on Friday also at 6:30. As Kelly down low mu tries to muscle it over the defense, can't do so after the offensive rebound. But Ben McKenzie pokes it away from Muxstad. Under control. He takes it all the way down the court. A nice lefty lay-in for Ben McKenzie. Like a double pump left-handed lay-in. He's having a great game to start. Tied up, 19 up. McKenzie, great, and it's not McKenzie, excuse me, but Szyzycki, great defense, pokes it away from Kim Raycroft and knocks it off his leg. And Hopkinton comes up with the possession. Yeah, the Dober Sherborne player, a little out of control there. Didn't really have many room to go up the the sideline, but he tried it anyway, and he just ran out of room, went off his leg, I believe. Szyzycki could have had a three-point shot there, turned it away. Oh, nice, nice pass inside to Kelly from Ionelli, and Kelly's shot softly drops in. Now a lead for Hopkinton, 21-19, first since their 8-5 lead. Ionelli almost pokes the ball away from Stark, but he recovers. Good defense by Brendan there. Nice cut by Stark on the other end after he gave the ball up. And he's rewarded with two points. 21-21 game now. Szyzycki open in the corner for three. Oh, Just short, but open. a nice look from McKenzie. Nice pass. Muckstadt's layup can't go in. And a frustration foul going against the junior guard as he missed a bunny and then reached over and got hit with a foul. His second 
Now seven uh, on Dover Sherburn and Hopkinton is, will be in the bonus for the final 525 of the first half. Yeah, that was, uh, like you say, a frustration. He had a wide, uh, all the time in the world to hit that shot, and he maybe anticipated some contact or whatever, right. but maybe a little too much time to think about it. You know, we, we've all been in those situations yep. if you've played mm -hmm. any ball over the years, and, mm -hmm. and that's what happened with with uh, Mustat. Mustat, yeah. Mustat. I'm impressed by this number 15, Evan Skiri, uh, of a freshman guard, very composed right, out there. Right, yes. Came in, hit that early three. Hasn't made any uh, turnover, any ill-advised moves, anything like that. Pretty calming presence for Dover Sherburn. Definitely. As Amber Sony went one for two on that trip, 22-21 lead for Hopkinton. Wah with the deep two. Miss Three on rebound two. to McKenzie. He takes it all the way. McKenzie, especially aggressive this nice. game. Szczytski with the rebound, up and in. He saves the possession for Hopkinson. Two That's points. That's too bad. And a tough play there by Kester. Did not. Didn't really have the angle. Tried to go around the side and hit with the region. And the Dover Sherborne player was in front of him dribbling, and then he right. kind, of, kind of slowed down, and Hester was kind of coming up his backside. He almost couldn't stop in time, and certainly that was a foul, definitely. Oh, yeah, sure. Definitely contact. No room there. Stark charging right into the defense. Wow, that's a tough. Misses two attempts. Szczytski with the board. Oh, stop pushed out of bounds. Szczytski was, yeah, was nudged out of bounds. Enough to push him, yep, and cause a turnover. No call, though. Yeah, that's too bad. He stepped out of bounds because he was pushed out of bounds. At least that's what it looked like from here. Hiller's three-point lead, 24-21, just under five minutes to go in the half. Nice drive from Stark, but a charge. Luke DeLoya picks it up, and he's pumped up after that one. Making an impact, Luke DeLoya. I mean, he, I think he making an impact, and I think he felt the impact. I mean, <laughs> taking one for the team, as we've said. He got run over by a train in that one. Second foul on Brett Stark. Lots of lots of uh, players on Dover Sherborne with, with, two, with fouls. two fouls. I don't yeah. think anyone has three, but that's a lot of players with two. Four twenty-five left here in this first half. 24-21 lead for Hopkinton. Very competitive game thus far. Kelly inside the dish for McKenzie. He can't finish the easy, the bunny. And bad luck there for Hopkinson. Ball rolls out of bounds at last off of Hiller. Dover Sherburn takes over. Getting physical out there. Oh, there's Ball a nice poked steal. away. Kester takes it away. From Gailey, he had no idea where Kester was. The high jumper from McKenzie hits Out nothing. But on the effort to save it, Dover Sherman's Kim Raycroft tried to save it, stepped out of bounds with it. Hopkinton keeps possession, and now McKenzie will take a rest. Well deserved. Dover Sherborne player almost took the Hiller cheerleader up, but the Hiller cheerleader, that's quick, quickly got out of the way. Pretty good quickness there. Pass inside to Deloya. He gives it right back to Amber travel. Sony. Three-second violation. Three-second call. Yep, goes against the Hillers. Hillers trying to keep some pressure on. 354 left in the half. Three-point lead. Dover Sherburn calmly breaking that press. Scary open for three. Takes his time. Just a bit short. Nice rebound from Drew Rancatori who we've seen in some prior games has had a big impact for this Hiller team in spurts. Got to get out of the key. Almost a three second. Three fired from Kester. Bit too strong. And Deloya. Okay, with the reach in. Boy, a, wasn't a whole lot going on there, but I guess enough to impress the refs to call a foul. <laughs> <laughs> That's Luke's first foul, so spreading things around for the Hillers. I don't think anybody, I think just uh, Michael Puvacot has two, as far as I can tell from here. 
but my memory's going as, my, as <laughs> I, you know, time goes by for me. But well, I think you're right. So it's not as bad as you think, then, Steve. That's good. That's good. That's a good sign. My wife might have a different opinion of that, <laughs> right, but that's another she, story. She might. Donna's we can bring her on sometime. That's right. She's in Florida right now for the weekend. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's too bad. Too bad. She's going to miss the snowstorm, <laughs> but I'm, I know. I'm already hearing about that. <laughs> but anyway, back to the game. <laughs> One point lead now for the Hillers after two foul, foul shots. 24-23 lead for the Hillers. 3-10 left in this first half. Both teams in the bonus. Both one for one for now. Kester inside to Kelly. They've been successful in getting Kelly the ball down low. He hasn't been as successful as converting those opportunities. Rankatori back out to Kester. A bit too unselfish there. Tried an extra pass. Stolen away by Dover Sherburn. And good D by Dover Sherburn on that possession. Scary with some quick moves, but Deloya not phased. Deloya and Rankatori with tough defense. Shot clock. Asak or his shot off the mark. Ball out of bounds. Scary tried to save it. Could not. Dover Sherburn turns it over. Mac Lind in the game right now. His first appearance. Junior forward, 25. Oh, lots Pass of inside there. to McKenzie. He had to, another one of those situations. He had way more room than he thought when he turned around and didn't quite know what to do with it. Yeah, he needed to. Yeah, it's hard. He had the back to his his back to the hoop and didn't realize it until he turned around and probably sh should have shot it in retrospect. But the Hillers keep possession. Yep. Another chance to add to this one point lead. Three seconds. I don't think they know it. McKenzie. Yep, the Hillers. No one paying attention to the shot clock. Not Coach Key, not anybody on the bench, not everybody on the floor. And a turnover there for Hopkinson. Yeah, that's like they had all day, but the, you know, the no one, no one at all the said anything. I yeah. would have expected someone to say it, but a turnover there. Dover Sherburn looking to take advantage with 140 now left in this first half. Oh, nice wide and open. And a pass it down low to Cam Raycroft. He is hit by Kelly on the shot, no good. But two free throws coming. Yeah, 135 left in the half. Hiller's 24-23 lead. I'll tell you, there's not, not a whole lot of scoring going on in this. Uh, no, it has really uh, co cooled off considerably in the second uh, second quarter for sure. I mean, the, the Raiders uh, had a 20 had a 19-14 lead after one, and they've only got five points now. Still only five points this quarter, so that's a tribute to the Hiller defense shutting them down. Tie score now. Skip pass. Kester launches the three. Ooh, and it rattles out. out. And Scary with the rebound. Inside to Asacker. He turns around. The hook finds the mark. Another now Dover Sherburn retaking the lead. 26-24. A minute left. Couple streaks here. Back and forth. Ooh, almost a travel. Ambersoni Ooh. drives. He misses. Ball poked away. Last touch by Ambersoni. And now a few substitutions for Hopkinton as Zizitsky and Breslin come back out. 46 sec seconds left in the first half. Hiller's trying to create a turnover here. Full court pressure. About 15 seconds separating the shot clock and the game clock. For Dover Sherburn inside, a mismatch raw over the smaller McKenzie. As he calmly knocks down the post shot. 28-24 lead. Shot clock is off. Hopkinton will have a chance to end this quarter with points. 
Now 10 seconds left. McKenzie and Aversoni playing catch. Ooh, who's that? McKenzie's to? pass. No one was looking for it. Stolen away. Pass to Scary. He can't handle it. Now one second. And Lynn and Breslin tried the full court shot. No good. And then a little flurry of activity there in their last kind of 45 seconds or so leaves Dover Sherburn with a four point lead, 28 24, going into the halftime break. Yeah, that's too bad for the Hillers. They had some momentum going, and uh, as you said, the the Raiders came back with a few hoops at the end to take the take the lead, and now they extended it to 28-24 at the half. And you know, again, uh, we'll have to double check on the fouls, but uh, things are spreading around, and and so far, you know, the Hillers have a little work to do to want to make make it seven in a row. And uh, as we listen to the and watch the uh, Hiller cheerleaders one more time. All right, and as we enjoy the Hillers routine right now, we're going to be, we hope you join us back for the second half in a few moments.
And we are back here, ready, about ready to start the second half. The Hillers trailing 24 to 28 to the Dover Sherman Raiders. Again, like we said, Hopkinton winners of their last six in a row, but have kind of run into a, a buzzsaw here and a tough Dover Sherman team that has been hitting from deep quite often. Although one thing to note for Dover Sherman going into the second half is the foul trouble. And I know Steve, you went down to try to clarify and see what we can learn about that for Dover Sherman. Well, I tried to, but I ran into a few friends on the way and I never <laughs> made it down there. But, I, but I, what I do recall is that some of the top players for Dover Sherborne, um, um, Asacker. Right, yeah, Oliver uh, Asacker, Jack, Jack Gately. He has two. Um, Muckstad, I believe, has two as yeah, well. There's a few players with two. We'll have to see how the. You know, the early part of the second half goes, and if anyone gets their third foul, you know, if, if, if I'm Coach uh, Tom Keene and I'm not, I, I don't know what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing play-by-play -play and not, not coaching. But, you know, if, they, if he can somehow come up with a part of his second half plan to go after some of those, you know, their bigger players and get a third foul on them early, that, that could be helpful uh, to get them back in the game. I mean, it's a really tight game. It's just a two-possession game going to the second half. Here we go. Yeah, we'll see. Both teams actually in that first half had foul trouble, so we'll see what the frequency of the calls are this time. As Kelly, two shots down low, no foul either time. Not saying there should have been, but a ball goes out of bounds, stays with Hopkinton. Brett Stark, number 21, pretty lanky. A lot of 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 oh, that was a nice play right there. Nice pass inside as Zizitsky rolls off a screen. Rolls right into a bucket, 28-26. Almost out of bounds. Nice. And Szyzycki again with those high energy plays. Comes back all the way from making that layup. Jumps in front of the late pass. Knocks Zach, it out of bounds. Zach brings a lot of energy. His motor's running right now. He's got about at least 10 points. And uh, very active out there. Ooh, that's got to be a something. And a travel called as Brett Stark charging hard down the lane. Made contact with a hiller, but a travel was called. A little out of control there. And uh, Steve, you, you also you did some other uh, sleuthing work during the uh, some interview work during the uh, halftime break. Found out that Tom Leone had an injury. What can you tell yeah. us about that? So he uh, evidently in practice sprained his ankle. He's you know, sitting on the bench with his boot on, which I'm sure he not, can't be happy about. That's all. Nice play defensively. Ambersoni knocks the ball off of Muxat's leg. Yep, so um, we're not sure how long Tom's going to be out, but we hope it's a quick uh, recovery. Yeah, and he is in that boot right now, so yep. probably will not be playing tomorrow at Westwood, though that's just conjecture at this point. He certainly he's walking around with the boot on, so that's a good sign. Oh, nice move. Sazinski, <laughs> nice <laughs> take. Reverse laying high off the glass. And we have a tie game now. Four quick points for Hopkinson. Uh, Zach's definitely got it going on tonight. Uh, keeping him in the game. He's got at least 12 points. The pull-up three for Gately. No good. But an offensive board. Now Stark. Short on his attempt. McKenzie with the defensive rebound. He takes it Euro. all the way. Nice Euro step pass. Muckstad and a great play there to finish. Six-point run now, 6-0 run for Hopkinton, 30-28 to 28 lead, 6.30 left in the third. Yeah, that was a nice uh, way to start the second half, so Coach Keen said the right things at halftime in the locker room, and Hillers are coming out flying, which is a really good sign. And uh, the other thing we were, we were talking about, you mentioned a minute ago, it's an unusual to have a Wednesday night game, a league game against, uh, you know, it's at Westwood, but what happened last um uh, Tuesday night, a week ago tonight, they were supposed to play at Westwood, and they went all the way down there, and the, uh, there was some power, there was a power outage or something, and they, they waited around an hour, and they drove back, so they never played, so oh, I see. that's the reason why there's a Wednesday night game, which is a, which is kind of a drag, and go all the way to Westwood and back, and you get, you know, you're, you're, you get your mindset, you're going to play a big game, and then, then it, then you drive all the way back, and you don't even play right. the game, so I, I ran into a couple of the players in the parking lot that night, and they were, they seemed to be back early. Mm -hmm. from Westwood, and that's what happened. So that's why they're playing tomorrow night at Westwood, and that's a big game back-to-back -back here. But we got to take care of business first here. Right, and Hopkinton trying to do that with a 6-0 run to start the second half. Muxat drives, his floater short. Ambersoni nice. fighting for the rebound. He po points it to Sadzitski. He takes it all the way. Layup just a bit too strong. Rebounded over Sherburn. Stark with it now. He pulls up. 
Nice idea, a bit jumper off the market just a bit. Szyzinski with the board now. Up and down here. Puvakad seeing him out on the floor again after those early fouls. Oh, too bad. Pass too high for McKenzie to handle, pulled. Taken away by Stark. Gately drives, takes the contact from Ambersoni. Gets the home court roll in Hopkinton. Tie game, 30-30. That was the first, per, first points of the second half. Uh, took, took, took a while for Dover Sherborne to get in, anything on the board here. McKenzie nice. knocks down the three off the feed from Zizitsky. Nice stroke there by Ben. He, plenty of time, good rotation, good timing, good pace on that. Ben McKenzie and Zizitsky have really provided an offensive punch today for Hopkinton. Oh, tough shot, man. Asacker. Wow. A nice nice catch to handle the ball while being hounded by Hopkinton. And an awkward shot somehow gets it to fall. That was a really unusual. I mean, I don't know how he got that to fall. He had no angle whatsoever, but he created it somehow. One point lead for the Hillers. Kuvakad inside to Szyzitski. Nice recovery. Brendan's going to get out of pass the Pass to Kelly. He is blocked on the shot. Oh, nice pass. Good idea. Stark somehow saves it in. Very close to stepping out of bounds with the ball. Muckstadt inside to Asacker. Nice look, but he's fouled on the floor by Kelly. Asacker, he's got some good moves underneath. Senior center. He's, uh, you know, again, we don't have the heights here, but he looks to be a few inches, couple inches taller than Brendan. He's got to be 6'4 anyway. So my best guess from up here. <laughs> But he plays plays longer than that. He's got long arms. He's got some good ball fakes underneath. <laughs> Quick three fired. No good. Goes out of bounds over the backboard. Hopkinson takes over. Up 33-32. Four minutes left in this third quarter. Going to be a close one. Tim, I don't know. We've right. had a few great finishes here. It looks like we've got another one coming up. It certainly does feel that way. Neither team pulling away. As Puvakad launches a three. I think that's his first shot of the game, but no good. Stark takes Ooh, it all the way. Euro. Runs right over Ambersoni. That was a euro and a half step on that one. I just, like, I would agree. He kind of ran over the Hiller player, Ambersoni. No call. It's a better game when the refs let him play like that. That wasn't very very obvious or anything, but McKenzie looking for help. Finds an Ambersoni. Three. Too strong. Asacker with the board. <coughs> Stark drives. Thought about it. Wah with the three. No good. And a foul called now on the, floor, on the loose no, ball. Not a shot, not a shooting foul. Referee was emphatically uh, making sure everybody saw that. Right. On the floor, he's, as he says. Got a full shot clock underneath, 30 seconds. Second foul on Ambersoni. Stark drives, uses the elbow to separate, knocks down the jumper, three-point lead for Dover Sherburn. Good, good D by Luke Deloya, just nice shot. Can't really do much more than that. Nice, nice shot by the Dover Sherburn player there. Here we go. Szyzinski driving baseline, reverse lay, and no good this oh, time. Yeah. Oh, Amber Sony had a chance at a, at two points, couldn't hit the layup. Stark drives, draws the foul, no good on the shot, but two free throws coming for Dover Sherburn, up 36-33. Yeah, they seem to have, uh, as we said earlier, they're playing a sense of desperation, and uh, to their credit, they have, you know, the whole third quarter, they have a total of zero fouls, so some of their players that were 
in jeopardy of getting a third foul, or uh, that hasn't happened yet. And uh, that that sort of cancels each other, cancels out now with 2:22 left in the third quarter. 36-33 lead. Now 37-33 lead for Dover Sherborne. Michael Ionelli subs in for Amber Sony as he takes the ball up. Mafiori the three, no good. Haven't seen uh, Mafiori until today, until uh, just now. Right. See if he can bring a little bit of good energy and a couple hoops before the end of the third quarter. That'd be help very helpful. Pass down low. Oh, geez, he's just playing defense, sir. Cam Raycroft <laughs> drive, uh, driving down the baseline, kind of fell over and uh, kind of bailed out right there by a foul called. The third one on Kester. Yeah, I, did, I just didn't see that one, but. Two point shot, no good. Rebound to Raycroft. Back down low, pass. Whoa, tough the shot. top bucket knocked down. Jack Gately off the feed from Waugh. Nice offense, offense there from Dover Sherburn. 39, 30, 33 now, six point lead. Yeah, one of the bigger point uh, leads the whole night for either team. Well, at one point Dover Sherburn had a double digit lead, but that was just briefly, and the Hillers came back. Well, McKenzie's three one. brings Hopkinson within three. That was, a, that was a really big one, Tim. They hadn't scored in a while, so. Pass inside, goes right into the hands of Mafiori. He rushes down the court. Under control. McKenzie driving, draws a foul. This one will be on the floor. Hopkinson will inbound under the Raider hoop. Pretty fast moving second half here. It's only under a minute to go. Not a lot of fouls called. Uh, the game itself is going going along pretty good pace. McKenzie comes off the screen, the three just a bit short. Less than a minute left here in this third quarter. 39-36 Dover Sherburn. Not a lot of fouls this uh, half, so it's keeping keeping things moving. Baseline jumper, no good. McKenzie with the rebound. He drives the whole way, tough shot, can't get it to fall. Kind of forced that one a little bit. But yeah, probably McKenzie's first bad shot of the game. No good on the, on the attempt. Dover Sherburn, about a half second separating the shot clock and game clock. Nice. Nice Kester jumps in front of that pass, Plenty seals it away. Well, now shot clock shot. is off for Hopkinson. They have a chance to tie this game before the end of the third. Five seconds left now. McKenzie with it. Here to Zizky. He drives. Oh, gets stolen away. And the shot at the end. No good. And we end this third quarter. After it looked at the at the start of it, Hopkinton had a quick run to take the lead, but now Dover Sherburn up 39-36. And we hand it over to the center of the floor for the 50-50 raffle. Everybody check your tickets for one. And tonight's winner is 8024571. That is 8024571. If you want, please come to the table and pick up your prize. Thank you for playing. All right, so at the end of that third quarter, again, we see Dover Sherman with a 39 36 lead, really kind of flipping the script after the first couple minutes of, of the third. Yeah, I would say, Tim, you know, th th just not a lot of offense going on at the half. The Hillers uh, were down 28 24. They only, they only mustered up 12 points that quarter. It's just kind of a low-scoring uh, game in general, but the Hillers usually uh, are putting, putting more points on the board. But that, you know, it's, both teams are playing very intense defense, and and uh, you know, three-point lead going in the fourth quarter. I think we're going to have a fantastic finish. Mm -hmm. uh, right, definitely I, feels be, like that. I'd be surprised if anyone pulls it out with a big lead at this point. I think it's going to be uh, who hits the free throws. You know, the, there's, there's no one-on-one -one situation right. pending. In fact, Dover Sherborne are only committed one foul that third quarter, so it's going to be quite a while before the Hillers get into, into a one-on-one. -on -one. The Hillers, on the other hand, have that's their fifth foul of the half, so they're going to put Dover Sherborne probably in a one-on-one -on -one situation in the not-too-distant future, but the Hillers will not see the one-on-one -on -one for quite a long time. 
So yes. that, that's not to, that doesn't really help the Hillers too much, but they just get hit their shots, work for good shots. In the meantime, uh, Alex Waugh has a couple, couple freebies. Missed the first one. Yeah, defensive miscommunication there by the Hillers. Like right off the inbound, Waugh right, uh, wide open, down low. Forced Zizitsky to, to rush in to try to recover it, and Waugh took advantage and drew the contact. One to two from the stripe on that trip. 40 to 36 lead now for Dover Sherburn. Again, Dover Sherburn seven and nine. Overall, 5-7 and seven in the TVL, fighting for their postseason lives right now. Need 10 wins to get in. Nice. As Szyzycki, with the offensive board, puts it up and in. Two-point game now. Ooh, lots of travel. Looked like it. That looked like a travel, too. A lot of slide going. Oh. And then on the other end, Kelly hit with the foul. Bumped Waz. He was... Driving baseline. That's his third, Brendan's third foul. Keep an eye on, on that one. That's, I think right now Brendan and uh, Zach are seem to, and Ben are the three three guys who seem to be have a, a groove on a little bit so far. But that could change. We'll take it from anybody. We just need to pull the win out. Free fired from Roycroft. Raycroft, no good. Amersoni with the board, and he is poked from behind, and a foul is called. Seven minutes exactly now left here in the fourth as Hopkinton will inbound under Dover Sherman's hoop. Down two. Three fired from Puvacad, no good, but McKenzie, lucky enough to be in the right spot, grabs the board. Use his body to get that position a little bit, uh, created, created a good angle to get the rebound, which is big. Puvacad oh, nice. probably could have been hit with a travel call, gets inside to Kelly, he can't hit the shot. Nice move. Nice move from Waugh. He's really come on strong in the second half. Two more points for him. That was a really sweet move on the baseline. Oh, there, Pubacod hit with the travel. He wasn't called for it last time. Was on this one. Reslin coming in for Pubacod. See if Jack can bring a, some energy and maybe a couple hoops for him. A three for Muckstadt, just off of Mark McKenzie, another rebound. One of his better rebounding games this season. He drives all the way, takes oh, a contact. Nothing called. But then it looked like on the uh, rebound effort, Kelly probably should have been called for an over the back. Nothing was called there. Hopkinton will have a chance. Very fortunate there, Tim, I would agree with you. There was definitely some contact coming over the top. That would have been his fourth foul. Oh, tough. <coughs> Unfortunate play by the Hillers giving the ball back. As a result of the Dover Sherborne tough D, just holding on to that four-point lead, still kind of snug. Everything, you know, everything's on the table here. Yeah. Coach Tom Keen looking to talk things over, calling a timeout. Also having a word with the referee right now. Not sure about what particular play. But probably much to do about nothing at this point. Hopkinton down 42-38. Just, uh, just over six minutes left here in the fourth quarter. And it looks like Dover Sherman has kind of kept that, kept that rhythm going at least a little bit from the end of the third where they were able to take a lead. Yeah, it's been this four to six point, you know, two, you know, mostly four point, six point, back and forth and uh, the Dover Sherborne's just like I said kind of keeping the Hillers at bay right and uh, the Hillers need a little bit of a run to get over the hump and it's you know time to do that for sure and uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of free throws overall tonight right and uh, the next foul on the Hillers is going to put Dover Sherborne at the line for one and one for the rest of the game um, well, we have a minute we should take Give a quick shout out to the director, Bob Hamilton. Doing some graphics night, Samantha Dings. On the cameras, John Ritz, Mary Arnott, and Denise Antaki. So that's great. 
thanks to our outstanding staff tonight and always keeping us uh, out of trouble most of the time. <laughs> right, most. Ball tipped out of bounds on that last possession there. Dover Sherburn keeps it. Good D by Breslin. Playing with his feet. Nice and steal. And then McKenzie takes the pass away. He drives down the court and is fouled by Muckstadt. Two free throws coming for McKenzie. McKenzie got the turnover and Breslin kind of put the pressure on the player who passed it. That created, right. you know, sort of a turnover assist. It should be a kind of a each got a half of a turnover if they, <laughs> if they could do that, but uh, oh, they really got to hit these free throws here. Tough luck on that free throw. Spins out. There Second one is good for McKenzie. 42-39, 5.45 left here in the fourth. Asacker off, rolls off the screen, wide open off the pass from Raycroft. Brendan got caught there a little bit. Under control. Szyzinski drives hard to the rim, can't hit the layup. Nice block. Ambersoni with the rebound. And Coach Tom Keane not liking what he's seen, a stagnant offense there from Hopkinton, uses another timeout. 5-10 left in the fourth. Yeah, there's only eight seconds on the shot clock, which is plenty of time to work for a couple passes and a good shot. Uh, certainly right. five-point lead for Dover Sherborne with five, just over five minutes left in the game. And uh, not a lot of fluidity offensively right now for the Hillers, but there's plenty of time to... Right, you know, yes, yeah, yeah, certainly uh, a lot of time left for either team really to make a run and make a late impact in this one. But right now, the last couple of minutes are the, the beginning, the uh, early three or four minutes of this fourth quarter and the last couple of the third has clearly been in, I think, Dover Sherburn's favor, although they've only established a five-point lead. But eventually time will start bearing down on the Hillers here, um, and they'll need to start making... Um, more, more of those free throws and more of those uh, open layups or jumpers. Yeah, the free throws are, you know, critical. Everyone, we're going to need every one of them at this point. You can kind of right. see where that's going. And, uh, and you know, with the Dover Sherb one, as we said, if they lose this game, they may not be able to make the playoffs mathematically. Right. So this is really a playoff game for them in re reality. And the Hillers, they can afford to lose it. I'm sure they don't want to lose it, but. Right, they could, they could clinch an appearance with a win here tonight, which would be a big, it's a big game for any school. Ooh, that's a tough call right there. Was that on Brendan? He looks like it was, that's oh. his fourth and off ball foul. Unfortunate. That's an unfortunate development there. Tough break for Hopkinton. Kelly went away from fouling up. by the Hillers. Nothing there. Asacker has, has, gotta be a has sealed oh, off oh. Szyzinski. The pass to Asacker tipped out by Hopkinton. Ambersoni, nice play. Looked like uh, Asacker was over the top there a little bit, but not enough to convince the ref to call a foul on him. Michael Ionelli back in the game for the Hillers. Five-point lead for Dover Sherborne. Good D. Narrowly avoiding five-second violation there. Stark with the jumper, no good. Good box out. Ryan Kester, textbook box out. Nice. Nice drive from Ionelli. Gets the Hillers off the bench. 44-41 lead now for Dover Sherburn. 4.20 left in the fourth. Stark drives Nothing there. short on the That's shot. That's going to be a self-pass. Yeah, that no call made. And then a jump ball called. If it had tipped the rim, that would have been a rebound. But we saw here, we had a clear view. It did not hit anything. It should have been a travel. 
Yeah, it sort of is, is passed it to himself. If you, however, you pick, pick, a, pick an infraction. Right, whatever it, yeah. it is. Could it be a travel? Could have been a. But anyway, four minutes left. Three point lead for the Raiders. It's over Sherborne. Hillers need a, need a stop right here. I'm impressed, as I said. Evan's scary. He's sort of the glue. He's a freshman, number 15, keeping things under control for his team. Ips out here late for Dover Sherburn. We don't see a lot of freshman point guards in that situation. Nice. Stark down low, can't hit the shot. Oh, Gets a rebound, though, and McKenzie tries to rip it away from him. Another jump ball. This one goes to Hopkinton. That's Big so, play defensively yeah. for McKenzie. Excuse me, that uh, Tim, that Coach Grady of Dover Sherburn looking for the foul there, but that was clearly a jump ball. Good. Good play by Ben McKenzie on that one. Hillers need a hoop here. McKenzie drives. Tough shot there. Lucky to get the foul call. Two free throws coming for the junior. McKenzie taking it to the pressure. Really wasn't a whole lot of room there. I don't want to say he got bailed out because it was definitely a call, but certainly um, you know, plenty of time. Three, 333 left. Looks like Ben has two shots here. First one is good. Brings the deficit down to two for the Hillers. Nice. Swishes nice. that one. He's three of his last four from the line. One point deficit. Now timeout called from Coach Grady of Dover Sherburn. Yeah, well, great game here. One point game, three minutes or so left in the game. Mostly parents here tonight. Don't see a lot of right, student yeah, body here. Yeah, not too packed a crowd. Uh, maybe there's a, the anticipation of a snow day tomorrow of some kind. Could be a, if I were a betting man and I'm not, it may be an early release. So the kids, if, if you're listening and you're thinking about sleeping in tomorrow, that may or may not happen, but I'm guessing you're going to maybe get an early release. Not but that we're encouraging anything, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm not the superintendent. I don't, I don't promise. I don't claim to be, but certainly going to be an interesting weather day tomorrow. So usually see a few more students here. I don't know if there's exams going on or what, but uh, nevertheless, uh, whoever's listening at home and watching at home on HCAM TV, we appreciate you doing that. We we have another game next Tuesday night, Tim. You and I will be doing the boys game, and it's uh, right. senior night, I believe, as I was told, next Tuesday night, so that'll be a nice uh, for I mean, sure, yeah. final home game, I think, for the, the Hiller fi final regular season home game. And perhaps they'll uh, keep, keep things rolling and get a, a home... Uh, home game in the playoffs. I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. I think the girls, that, that should happen for them. Yep, they are definitely in position yep. for sure. Yep. Both the boys and the girls poised for postseason play. Boys have a chance to clinch that tonight with a win. The Dover Sherburn not making it easy. Scary. Nice play. Driving wow. through the lane somehow oh gets the goodness. layup to fall. I mean, that's just poised. Not, I, it must be 14 or 15 years old. Rankatori gets it down low and he is fouled. Looks like this one's going. That one's going on Stark, it looks like. Really nice play again uh, by the freshman, uh, Evan Skiri. That was a big hoop and need an answer here. The one thing we for, uh, failed to mention of uh, Muckstadt picked up his fourth foul. He's still out there for Dover Sherburn, and this one, this foul on Stark, his third. As Kelly's subbed back out onto the floor, he also has four fouls. I'm sure, there's a little bit of instruction to have him watch, uh, watch himself. And uh, you know, if you're Dover Sherburn, you take the ball right to him, try to. Scary driving. He was fouled by McKenzie as he tried one. to dish. Yep, free throw, at least one free throw coming for Scary. We'll see what the freshman is like at the line with the game on the line. I mean, he's got about 10 points, really, really controlling things for Dover Short. What didn't start the game, but he's certainly uh, finishing the game pretty nicely for Dover Sherborne. Not good news for the rest of the Tri-Valley League when you get a freshman like that. Uh, Anyway, as he sinks the first free throw. Second one rattles in as well. Four point lead for Dover Sherburn. Two point 
2.45 left here in the fourth. Hopkinton trailing. Need some type, need a bucket here. Keep the pressure on Dover Sherber and McKenzie launches the three. That rattles around, no good. Ionelli tips it out of bounds. Dover Sherbring takes over. Looks like the right call there, Tim, and uh, Ionelli was questioning, but uh, I think it went off him. 232 left, four point deficit here. Dover Sherbring putting the game in the hands of Skiri. Looks like their best ball handler. Nice pass to Stark as he leans into a jumper. Six point lead now for Dover Sherbring. Need a hoop here, guys. Down low to Kelly. His shot, no good. Fighting for the rebound. Oh, very Kelly almost there. hit with wow. his fifth foul right there. Definitely some frustration on, on his part. Now scary with it again. Very close. Stark oh, takes it all the way, a, a travel. He saw the Hawkinson defender sliding over and tried to take another step to get out of the way. Turnover there for Dover Sherbin and a timeout called by Hopkinton. Down six, 50 to 44, 153 left in the fourth. Well, geez, uh, Dover Sherbourne, to their credit, they came over here facing a, a hot Hiller team winning six in a row coming in and a, on a you know, away game for them. Their only game of the year uh, these two, that these two teams are going to play against each other, like you said. And uh, it's been this four to six point deficit the whole game for the most part. Right. And Dover Sherbourne is playing some tough D. The Hillers are going to need to. You know, focus and get a quick hoop here. I, I don't think they should be running the, the shot clock down to 20, you know, 25. They should get a shot off and within 10 seconds and just keep, you know, they're down, to, you know, two or three possessions here. So one at a time. And uh, hopefully they can create a couple turnovers here. Uh, right. That, and the other thing I'll just add before, I, you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let you go and I'm going to step on you there. But the, the Dover Sherborne is not in the one on one. So. Uh, there might be a, you might see a quick foul to get them in the one-on-one -on -one situation, right. uh, which will keep the clock uh, from moving too quickly for the Hillers. But six-point deficit, totally attainable to get make that deficit up in the without just under two minutes to go. But they need a break or two, play some tough D as we go. All right, you talked about maybe forcing some turnovers, but Dover Sherburn has put the ball in the hands of Scary, the the young freshman who has been very calm and poised this game, as you've been talking about, Steve. Yep. And he hasn't made any mistakes here late. As Kelly gets the dish from McKenzie, and he is fouled on the shot, can't hit. But two free throws coming for the junior. Yeah, that's the right strategy. Uh, Coach Keen probably said, hey, don't, don't waste a whole lot of time here, guys. Just work it down low, get the shots off. If they don't go, you get some free throws. First one falls for Kelly. Second one, no good. Rebound to Raycroft. Tough one. Hopkinton has left about three or four points on the board here in the fourth quarter for missed free throws. Ooh, almost a foul there. Dover Sherman using as much of the shot clock as they can, up five. Zach, Zach and uh, down low is just a lot of, a lot of pushing going on down there. Ooh, shot no it. good from Muckstadt. Ambersoni for three, mm. just a bit strong. Nice. McKenzie nice offensive board, his shot no good, but Asak are hit with the foul as he tried to alter McKenzie's shot. Boy, number 21, Brett Stark and Zach Sazitsky down low, the other end. They were just leaning on each other for about 20 seconds straight. No, there could have been a foul on either one of them because they were right. both really getting at it. But um, And then here down the other end, Ben McKenzie taking it strong to the hoop, which is what they got to do. And uh, he drew the foul, hit the first one. Beautiful. Two for two on that trip for McKenzie. A minute exactly left now. 50 to 47 lead for Dover Sherburn. Scary, nice put play. in a tough spot, but makes a great pass to get out of the trouble. Stark. Almost a travel. Down low. No, he fans wanted the travel. I looked like he kept his pivot foot. 
And then Asacker just kind of trying to dribble out of trouble, hit for the foul by McKenzie. Should be a free throw coming for Asacker. I don't think Coach Keenan agreed with that call. It was really good deep. Ben's playing with his uh, his feet. At this point in the game, I didn't I didn't see much of a call there, but you know, I mean, there's, there's con they're all they're letting all sorts of contact go at the end of the game as the refs should, and I didn't know if that was warranted a call. Asacker, no good. Hopkinton with the ball, down three, 40 seconds left. Work for a good one. Plenty of time. There it is. Hammersoni drives. Nice. Lefty layup, no good. Tzitzki rebound. Nice. Oh. No good. Asacker grabs it. Need a foul. Oh, nice. Hammersoni seals the ball away. Tzitzki ends up with it. Now Hammersoni over. Three point shot fire from Kester. But that shot, I guess, nullified. A timeout called before he got that shot off. 10.5 seconds left after all of that. Hopkinton still down three, 50 to 47. Yeah, they're launching threes. Uh, well, they were thinking about launching three there, but you know, Coach Keen, I, I think that's probably a smart move. Get, let's just get ourselves organized, plenty of time. 10 seconds, work for a good one. I mean, you could go, there's two strategies here. They can try to work for a quick three with, after you know one pass, work for a quick three to tie it up, or you take it, take it up strong in the next two or three seconds and try to get a hoop and draw a foul. And if you don't get the hoop, you still draw the foul and stop the clock. Right. Um, and then and then you get a foul, then you go back and forth a couple of times. But you know, certainly, it's the way this thing's played out. We kind of knew there was going to be a fantastic finish. In the right. We got one. Uh, Hillers have a chance. They First first things first, they need to get a bucket and, and a quick one. All right. We'll, we'll see what Coach Keene has drawn up. 10.5 seconds left. Hopkinton will inbound. Down three here in the fourth quarter. A chance to clinch a postseason berth on the line. Killer fans rooting for a good shot. There it is. Kelly over to McKenzie. He nice. steps back, takes the three. Oh, almost down. banks it in. Kelly, another chance. Kester fires the three. Just short. Amber Sony can't get the shot off. And the Hillers fall here at home to Dover Sherburn, 50 to 47, as McKenzie and Kester had attempts late at a three-point shot to tie the game. Boy, they did, Tim. That was a good finish. They had a couple shots. Hey, not bad. Ten seconds left. They got two legit, two three, good looks. Yep, really two good looks. And and uh, congratulations to both teams. They played played their hearts out. And uh, you know, the hats off to the Raiders coming out on an away game and uh, needing the win to stay, to keep their playoff hopes alive, and they got it. So um, we'll, be back, uh, we'll be back next week, but in the meantime, why don't you, maybe we should acknowledge our excellent staff here, Tim. And yep, directing Bob Hamilton, graphics, Samantha Dings, cameras, John Ritz, Mary Arnott, and Denise Antaki. Uh, once again, we want to let you know, Hopkins, for the Hiller boys, they will be playing at Westwood tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. and at Medfield on Friday, also at 6.30 p.m. And we'll be back here doing the Hillers game on Tuesday, also at 6.30, I believe. Um, so just we just want to say one more time for Steve Spector, uh, I'm Tim Halatic. We want to thank you guys for joining us here, and we hope to see you next Tuesday.